Hello and welcome to the screencast on calculating the relative formula mass of a compound. We're going to start as we start every lesson with a retrieval practice. So I want you to read through the questions and then pause the video and we'll come back when you've answered the questions. Okay, welcome back. I hope you didn't have too much trouble with those. What is the definition of relative atomic mass? Relative atomic mass is the mean mass of an atom of an element compared to one twelfth of the mass of a carbon 12 atom. We need to know that definition because they very often ask that in an exam. Sulfur has three naturally occurring isotopes. 95% of all sulfur is sulfur 32. 0.8% of all sulfur is sulfur 33. 4.2% of all sulfur is sulfur 34. So what is the relative atomic mass of sulfur? In order to do that, we need to multiply the mass by the percentage. 32 times 95 plus 33 times 0.8 plus 34 times 4.2 and we need to divide that by 100 because these are percentages. That comes to 32.09 and we give it to one decimal place so it's 32.1. Sulfur 32 and sulfur 34 are the most common isotopes of sulfur. Describe the similarities and differences between these two isotopes. Okay, so both isotopes have the same number of protons because they're both sulfur. So they both have 16 protons. They both have the same number of electrons. They both have 16 electrons. But the way in which they're different is that sulfur 34 has two more neutrons than sulfur 32. So sulfur 34 has 18 neutrons and sulfur 32 has 16. Okay, so our learning objective today is to know how to calculate the relative formula mass of a compound. And at the end, we want to also be able to work out the percentage mass of an element in a compound. These are our success criteria. I want you to be able to identify the elements present in formula. I want you to be able to calculate the relative formula mass of elements or compounds with simple formulae. I want you to be able to calculate the relative formula mass of compounds with slightly more complex formulae that usually include brackets. And at the end, I want you to be able to calculate the percentage element in a compound given any formula. Right, so the definitions of these terms, we've already met the relative atomic mass, which is the mean mass of an atom of an element compared to one twelfth of the mass of carbon 12 atom. Today, we're going to look at the relative formula mass, and that is the sum of all the relative atomic masses of the elements added together. So, all atoms have different relative atomic masses. We've looked at the relative atomic masses of single atoms of different elements. But what do we do when there's more than one atom involved? As in diatomic elements like O2, Cl2, H2. Or in compounds where you have atoms of different elements joined together. When we calculate the mass of more than one atom joined together, we call this the relative formula mass and we give it the symbol MR. But before we can calculate the relative formula mass, we need to remind ourselves what a formula is. This just means telling me what elements and how many atoms of each element there are in a compound. So, for instance, we have one calcium. I know there's one because there are no numbers at the bottom after the calcium. And we have two chlorine atoms. 
and know that we have two because we've got a small two after the chlorine. So what do you think we call this? What do we call this formula? It's called calcium chloride. Right, what we're going to do now, we're going to do our first checkpoint. If you look at H2O, it tells you that you've got two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. I want you to do the same for all the other nine formulae. So pause the video now and come back when you've written which elements are in each of the compounds and how many atoms you've got in each one. Okay, welcome back. Right, CO2, you've got one carbon and two oxygen. SO2, you've got one sulfur and two oxygen. KNO3, you've got one potassium, one nitrogen and three oxygen. H2SO4, you have got two hydrogen, one sulfur and four oxygen. TiCl4, one titanium and four chlorine. CuSO4, one copper, one sulfur and four oxygen. This one might be a bit difficult because it's got brackets. One barium, two hydrogen and two oxygen. We have to multiply each of the things inside the brackets by the number outside. So we've got two oxygens and two hydrogens. ZnCn2. So that is one zinc, two carbons and two nitrogens. And NH4NO3, that's two nitrogens. I wonder if you spotted that because you've got two nitrogens in two different places. Four hydrogen and three oxygen. Okay, so that's our first success criteria. Hopefully you were, were successful. Now we're going to look at trying to calculate the relative formula mass of elements with simple formulae. So how could we work out the mass of a compound? To find the relative formula mass of a compound, we add up the relative atomic masses of all the elements in the compound. So we've got carbon is 12 and each of the hydrogens is one. So we're going to add up all of those because the whole total thing is made of 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Another way of writing it is 12 plus 4 times 1. That will give us the same answer, 16. Okay, so what is the relative atomic mass of a carbon atom? So if you look at carbon, I've got a 12 in there. So the relative atomic mass of carbon would be 12. Let me just put in all of these atoms. So the relative atomic mass of a carbon atom is 12. The relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16. I want you to pause the video now and just write down what the relative formula mass is of the oxygen molecule and of the carbon dioxide molecule. Okay, I hope that didn't take you too long. 16 add 16 is 32, and 12 added to 16 and 16 is 44. The relative formula mass of water is 18. Explain where this number comes from. So H2O. Hydrogen has a relative atomic mass of 1. Oxygen has a relative atomic mass of 16. There are two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen in H2O. So 2 times 1 plus 16 gives us 18. 
Okay, so I have drawn out the atoms with their relative atomic masses. I want you to calculate the relative formula masses of each of these molecules. Okay, so pause the video now and come back when you've got the answer. Okay, welcome back. I hope you were successful. Right, the relative formula mass of chlorine is 35.5 plus 35.5 gives us 71. Ethane is 12 plus 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. It gives us 30. Chloromethane is 35.5 plus 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 gives us 50.5. Trichloromethane is 35.5 plus 35.5 plus 35.5 plus 12 plus 1 gives us 50.5. Ethanol, 12 plus 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 16 gives us 46. And bromomethane, 12 plus 12 for the two carbons plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 80 gives us 107. Can you see an easier way to get straight from the formula to the relative formula mass? Rather than just adding up the individual bits, you could multiply them, couldn't you? Okay, so I've given you the relative atomic masses of the elements that you need here. I want you to pause the video again and work out the relative formula masses of each of the following. Okay, welcome back. Right, the first one, two times one for hydrogen, plus 32 for sulfur, plus four times 16 for oxygen. So two plus 32 plus 64 gives us 98. 39, for potassium plus 16 plus 1 gives us 56. 40 plus 12 plus 3 times 16 gives us 40 plus 12 plus 48 which is 100. And for magnesium oxide we've got 24 plus 16 which is 40. So hopefully you were successful with that. And that means, if you were able to do that, that you can calculate simple formula masses. If you were not able to do that, I need you to go back and rewind the video and just have a little more practice doing it. For the rest of you, I would like you to carry on and we'll see if we can do slightly more tricky formulae. Okay, how do we work out the relative formula mass when we have brackets in the formula? We use brackets when we have bundles of atoms that come together as an item, like fish and chips. Some of these bundles you may have come across are hydroxide. So the hydroxide ion looks like OH. So every time you have a bundle of OH, it's hydroxide. SO4 is a bundle we call sulfate. NO3 is a bundle we call nitrate. And CO3 is a bundle we call carbonate. If we need only one of these bundles in the formula, we can just write it down without brackets. So here we've got sodium hydroxide because we've only got one hydroxide there. Or copper sulfate. We've only got one copper and one bundle of sulfate. If we need more than one of them, we will have to use a bracket around them to show that we are multiplying everything in that bundle. Aluminium needs to react with three nitrate ions, NO3, in the formula aluminium nitrate, NO3 times three. If you don't use the bracket, it would appear as AlNO3 
with our then three that we want to multiply, but that actually means aluminium, one atom, nitrogen, one atom, and 33 oxygen atoms. So we can't do that. Okay. So how do we work out the relative formula mass when we have brackets in the formula? So this is what we have to do every time. The first thing you've got to do is calculate the mass of what is inside the bracket. Okay, so in the case of this aluminium oxide, hydroxide, sorry, you would work out what the formula mass of OH is. So that is oxygen is 16 and hydrogen is 1. So inside the bracket, you've got OH, which is 17. Next, you multiply that 17 by whatever number is outside the bracket. So in this case, it's 3. So we're going to add 3 OHs. That's 17 plus 17 plus 17 or 17 times 3. And that gives us 51. Lastly, and it's always done last, you add the other atom at the beginning. So that aluminium only gets added on at the very end once you've done all the multiplying. So once we've got the 51, we're going to add the 27 onto it and the whole thing comes to 78. OK, so what I want us to do now is have a little practice with that. This is going to be a little bit more difficult, but don't forget we are doing the mass inside the bracket. Then we multiply it by the number outside the bracket and then finally add on the metal at the beginning. OK, so pause the video now and come back when you have the answers to these relative formula masses. OK, so let's try and go through them. Right, magnesium hydroxide. We're going to work out what the hydroxide is, which is 1 plus 16. OK, so that's 17. Multiply it by 2, which gives us 34. And then add on the 24. And that gives us 58. I think we've already done aluminium hydroxide, but let's see how well you remember. So we've got 1 times 16, 17, times 3 is 51. Add on the 27, and that gives us 78. Now, in this case, we've got sulfate, iron sulfate. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the sulfur to four oxygens. OK, so that is... 16 times 4 is 64, plus 32, that will give us 96. Multiply that by 3, that gives us 288. And then we need to multiply 56 by 2, which is 112. Add that to the 288 and we get 400. Big mass. Right, this last one is copper sulfate, which copper sulfate, when it's hydrated, carries some water in the crystals. So the full formula is CuSO4 dot 5H2O. So the way we work it out is 64 plus 32 plus 4 times 16 for the oxygen. Then we're going to add on 5 times two hydrogens, which is two, plus 16. OK, so we've got 64 plus 32 plus 64 plus 5 times 18, which is 90. 160 plus 90 gives us 250. So hopefully we had some success with that. And that is calculating the relative formula mass with formulae with brackets. OK, so now let's go on to our last part of our success criteria. We're going to look to see if we can calculate the percentage element in a compound. 
So the percentage mass, we have to work out how much of the relative formula mass is given by a certain element. Okay, so we need to work out the percentage of the element in the compound, convert it into grams and work out the percentage using the equation, the mass of the element in the compound divided by the total mass of the compound times 100. Okay, so for instance, if I had, say, copper sulfate and I wanted to find out how much does copper contribute to it, I would say 64.5 divided by the relative formula mass of copper sulfate times 100. So let's have a little look at what is the percentage mass of magnesium oxide? How much of that is magnesium and how much is oxygen? Well, magnesium oxide has a relative formula mass of 40, okay? 24 grams of that would be magnesium. So in order to work out how much magnesium is there, it would be 24 divided by 40 times 100, which works out to be 60%. Oxygen, Oxygen has a mass of 16, so we're going to put 16 over 40 times 100, and that comes out as 40%. And luckily, 60 plus 40 equals 100%. Okay, so why are we doing this? Well, here's an example of why somebody would want to know this. Plants grow by using nitrogen. OK, so if you wanted to work out which fertilizer had the most nitrogen in, you need to look at the formula and work out how much of that is actually made up by nitrogen. OK, so we've got three fertilizers, mega pumpkin, which is actually made from a compound called ammonium nitrate, super grow, which is made from a compound called ammonium sulfate and plant be big which has got a compound called urea in it so we're going to use the formula up here the mass of the element of nitrogen remembering how many nitrogens you've got in the formula divide it by the formula mass of the compound so the first thing you're going to have to do is work out the formula mass of each of these compounds and you're going to put the amount of nitrogen at the top divided by the formula mass and multiply it by 100. So I want you to pause the video now, carry out that percentage mass and come back and we'll go through it together. OK, let's try and go through these. OK, so we'll self-assess our work. So the percentage of nitrogen in ammonium nitrate, you notice that you have got two nitrogens in there. So you've got 2 times 14 divided by 80 times 100, which gives us 35%. Ammonium sulfate, you have got two nitrogens again in that. Hopefully you've got the relative formula mass correct. So that's 2 times 14 over 132 times 100 gives you 21%. And urea, you've got two nitrogens again. It's 2 times 14 over 60 times 100, which is 47%. So if you were a farmer, you would use the urea compound because it's got more nitrogen in and therefore the plants would grow better. Right, we're going to do two checkpoints now. First of all, with simple formula and then with more complicated formula. So 
So pause the video again, work out the percentage of oxygen in the following compounds. So pause the video now. Okay, welcome back. Right, the percentage of oxygen in magnesium oxide is, well, first of all, the formula mass is 24 plus 16 gives us 40. We've got one atom of oxygen in there, which is 16. So that's 16 divided by 40 times 100, 40%. Potassium oxide, you've got the formula mass of potassium oxide, 2 times 39 plus 16 is, gives you 94. One atom of oxygen, so that's 16 divided by 94 times 100 is 17.02%. And iron oxide, the formula mass of iron oxide is 160. We've got three atoms of oxygen in there. So on the top, we need to put 16 times 3, which is 48. 48 divided by 160 gives us 30%. So I hope you were able to do that. And I'm going to try some harder ones with harder formulas. So once again, pause the video and work out the percentage of oxygen in the following compounds. Okay, we've got magnesium hydroxide, so we need to work out the formula mass first. Magnesium is 24 and we've got two times 16 plus one, which gives us 34. So the formula mass is 58. We have two atoms of oxygen. So that's 2 times 16, which is 32. So 32 divided by 58 times 100 gives us 55.17%. Aluminium hydroxide, right? Keep coming up with um, aluminium hydroxide. A formula mass is 27 plus three times 17, so that gives us 78. We've got three oxygens in aluminium hydroxide, so that's 48. So 48 divided by 78 times 100 gives us 61.53%. Iron sulfate, well, the formula of iron sulfate is 112 plus 3 times 96, which is 400. We'd already worked that out before. Now, I wonder if you actually spotted we have 12 atoms of oxygen, which is 12 times 16, 192. So 192 divided by 400 times 100 gives us 48%. And hydrated copper sulfate, got quite a lot of oxygen in this as well. Right, the formula mass, which we worked out before, was 250. We've got nine atoms of oxygen. We had four in the sulfate and five in the water. So that's 144. So 144 divided by 250 times 100 gives us 57.6. I hope that you have a good understanding of this now. So that's all our success criteria. If you have struggled with any part of it, just rewind the video and try and study it a little bit slower. Thank you for joining me for this screencast.